Do you think the fans are gonna freak out in a good way or bad way? I don't know. I mean, I really, I have no idea. Oh. I mean, but I think they'll freak out. Well, she was right. Fans are certainly freaking out over the Ozark series finale that was Laura Linney on the Kelly Clarkson show right before the last seven episodes dropped. And I gotta say, those episodes had me on the edge of my seat. Get back in your car, you bitch. Oh, suck my cock, hole. Just when I thought I had an idea of where it was all going, it would just whoop, go in another direction. It was unpredictable TV. Well, but you were all unharmed. And I'll say it because apparently I have to be blatantly obvious. If you haven't watched the Ozark series finale yet, don't watch this segment. Okay, I feel like that's pretty obvious, but I apparently I have to state it. So if you haven't watched it, don't watch the segment. Okay, here we go. I want it to be a happy ending, but there's got to be a little bit of a, well, is it happy for them? So that was Jason Bateman on The Tonight Show, also right before the last seven episodes dropped, talking about what the goal of the ending was. And the whole thing was like, well, how are we going to end it? Should the Bird family pay a bill? You know, like, should they get away with it? Should they not? Now, going into these seven episodes, I thought the whole trajectory of the show was Wendy becoming the ultimate kingpin. No celebrating yet. And paying the bill, as Jason phrased it, would be killing Marty. So that's what I thought the ending was gonna be. I remember saying to the writers, like, oh my God, Laura Linney's gonna do our show. Like, we cannot suck. It's not okay for us to suck if she's gonna be on our show. Obviously. If you remember back to season one, Wendy was really on the peripheral as she found out what Marty was up to. And I thought after that season, I thought, wow, the show is really underutilizing Laura Linney. I wasn't looking to do a series, I really wasn't. But it was really just wanting to, to see what Jason was gonna do. And I was like, well, okay. But I remember it was episode nine of season one that Wendy had that scene in the funeral home. And I thought, oh, there's a spark there. Well, but surely there's some room for negotiation. Not really. When we first started all doing this together, Chris and I had a long conversation about like, how do we, what, what, what could be played with Wendy and what that could be. And I think we initially just started with a basic idea about identity. You're struggling. It was the first moment that I thought, this is what Laura Linney signed up for. It seems to me you're trying to solve that problem by upselling and overcharging a man in grief who is my friend. What if she's from somewhere else and she's been thrust back to the place where she's been trying to get away from? So over the seasons, we saw the slow ascension of Wendy and ultimately taking over the driver's seat from Marty. So that's where I thought the end game of the series was going. But Jason says they didn't have a clear ending in mind when they started the show. We didn't have the finish line done at, at, at the very, very beginning, um, but uh, we were pretty clear that it should be a, a, a family show, or not a family show, but a, a, not an AA. <laughs> it's funny that everyone laughed at him when he said a family drama, but I actually watched that after I watched the series finale. And of course, you know what he means by family drama, that it's ultimately about this family unit. And of course, he couldn't explain that without spoiling things. But yeah, that's what the show is ultimately about in the end. Well, it doesn't work like that. Since when? Bringing the family unit back together. Now, when that scene was playing out, I did think that Jonah was gonna show up with a gun. Um, but when he raised that rifle, there was a part of me that thought, is he gonna turn the gun towards Wendy? And then with that abrupt ending, Obviously, they wanted to leave us with little doubt in our minds as to who he shot, but Sean or Chris Mundy told Vanity Fair afterwards that it was in fact Mel who got shot and died there. And he says he hopes the viewers aren't sure if they should cheer or not. We wanted people to think about the reality of what happened, not just in the context of watching a TV show, but also in whatever reality these characters are gonna keep living in. In a Zoom table talk with Entertainment Weekly, Jason hinted at that complicated final shot. The ending has a very satisfying resolution, but it doesn't smack you in the face. I know some people are frustrated by open-ended endings. It's very reminiscent of The Sopranos, but I thought this provided a lot of resolution. I mean, because the show is ultimately about bringing the family unit together, and obviously 
The family unit is back together once Jonah kills somebody. <laughs> now if that tease of Jonah shooting someone frustrated you, I can only imagine what your reaction to the other big tease was that ended up being a tease. <laughs> So the car crash was a complete misdirection. Before the final episodes were released, I was reading all these theories online as to who was going to die in the car crash that we were teased with at the beginning of season four, because there must be some consequence to it because we saw it in a flash forward, right? Well, now hearing Jason's explanation of the ending, it's clear that the car crash was just meant to play with our expectations. I think it would have been easy to really kind of, you know, push the, the, the TNT lever down and, you know, have some big, huge, you know, forced crescendo at the end. It's, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that it's not that. I believe that accident was your last warning. Oh no. It's an assurance that we're gonna make it out alive. That was a bold choice and really an F with the audience moment. And it put a big smile on my face. Like, here's the thing, like, when we saw the aftermath and Marty got out of the car, then Jonah got out of the car, then Charlotte, who had been the most predicted choice to die in the crash, got out of the car. But then we saw that Wendy was not getting out of the car immediately. Of course, it goes to our heads, is Wendy dead? Think about how unsatisfying it would have been if Wendy just died in a random car crash. So no, that could not have happened. And by the way, the car crash scene was the final scene they shot of the series. These shows end and people scatter. It's like feathers in the wind, we just all go. But there is always, I really believe this, in shows like this, there's an invisible string that sort of connects all of us. I know some viewers wanted to see Wendy die, but yeah, her dying in a random car crash would have been dumbfounding. What ultimately the car crash was, was, you remember how the kids talked about what life would be like if their parents were dead? Well, now all of a sudden they were presented with a very real scenario that they could have died and they clearly didn't want them to die. So I think ultimately it was another way of bringing the family unit back together because Charlotte and Jonah, Jonah learned that they didn't want to see their parents die. We of course did see a major character's death and once again, it came at the sacrifice of bringing the family back together. Chris called me and he said, hey, I need to talk to you. And I said, what? And I said, wait, let me guess. I said, am I dying? And he said, yeah. How'd you know? I said, it is like a Greek tragedy. Ruth was the one that paid the price and showing her Chris Mundy knew that they were killing off a fan favorite. The decision to kill Ruth was by far the hardest thing in the entire course of the show. There was a point where all of a sudden it's where the story was going. Ruth's the easiest one to just cheer for. It's interesting, Chris, that what you're saying, because like we're also forgetting like Ruth did kill her uncles. Like I know everyone's like, oh yeah, poor Ruth. But I'm like, guys, she murdered her uncles. Julia Gardner might not see Ruth as a hero, but she certainly felt the weight of having her character killed off in the end. How'd you find out? Claire Shaw told me. It was so sad. It honestly was like one of the saddest weeks. I'm not sorry. It was it was really, really hard. Julia echoed that in an interview with Vanity Fair. It was really emotional, but everyone was there. It meant a lot to me that Jason was directing because he started the show and he ended it. Laura was there all night for love and support, even though she wasn't in the scene. It was a hard day, but a beautiful day. birds had been this invasive species that came in and they wiped out, they, all the langurs are gone. I think it would have been untrue if, if, if Ruth didn't go. Chris told TV Line, capitalism doesn't work unless there's a winner and a loser. There's something about it that's cynical and there's something about it that's very just true. Julia echoed that to Vanity Fair saying, the fall of Ruth reflects real life in a way. The middle class, the poor, the dreamers almost always pay for it in a sense. The super powerful people with all the money at the end, they do okay. She always wanted something better, but didn't know how to get it. And Julia thinks that her character was already gone in the way before these seven episodes began, saying she already died when Wyatt died. Good things were happening to her, but it still wasn't filling that void. If she got hit by a car, she wouldn't care. If there was a gun being pointed at her, she wouldn't care. That acceptance, it's really dark, 
But that's really what it is. I'm okay with Ruth dying from a story perspective because it is upsetting and unsettling that she died. Like you think about all that Marty and Wendy put her through and she was in this life because of Marty and Wendy. So it is tragic that she is dead, but the reality is she made a major mistake in killing Javi, something that Wendy and Marty warned her about. So ultimately, Ruth didn't prove to be as savvy as Wendy and Marty. Even though she made a lot of smart decisions over the course of this series, she made one bad one and that cost her her life. You know, she wanted to be something that she wasn't. So while Ruth might have been overly ambitious in the end, I love the control that she took in her own death. Well, are you gonna fucking do this shit or what? I thought that line was so powerful because it was Ruth deciding when she would die. And Jason told Vanity Fair just how vital that moment was, saying Ruth ends her life metaphorically by standing her ground and going out on her terms. I talked to Julia about how to navigate what Chris had given us in the script, which was that the character has a moment of fear and realization of what's coming, then a moment to transition to acceptance and almost turning it into a good thing. Hopefully the audience will yeah. think, ah, they've kind of threaded the needle between a happy ending, but that there's a little bit of, they're, they're limping. So Ruth dying is that limp that Jason teased for Wendy and Marty. And yeah, I think it's the appropriate one. Like you think about the other scenarios that could have been the ending, right? Like, so they all go to jail, let's say. And that would have worked if this was a morality tale, which it was not. Um, they all end up happy. And we got to see that at the party, right? We kind of got to see that happily ever after scenario. Um, and it was weird. And you knew it probably wasn't gonna end this way. So yeah, we saw the happy ending and that wouldn't have been satisfying if that's how the show ended. So somebody had to die. And like I said, I thought it was gonna be Marty because he was the one who started this whole thing. So it made sense that he would be the one that had to pay the ultimate price. Um, I know a lot of people <laughs> wanted Wendy to die. And I saw this narrative out on Twitter that people saying she's the most hated character in like TV history, which I just don't understand. Like I, I've talked about it before, how similar Wendy Bird is to Walter White from Breaking Bad. And that, yeah, they start the series as just you know, living life in suburbia and then they get caught up in this dark criminal underworld and they just rise. They just become this mastermind, this kingpin within those worlds. The one who knocks is the one holding the gun. And no one hated Walter White. And certainly no one hated Tony Soprano. So there's definitely an element of sexism that goes along with the hatred of Wendy. Um, I just don't see how it would have made sense uh, to have Wendy die. Because like I said, it was all about her ascension and if all of a sudden she was dead, I just don't see what the show is saying. So yeah, I'm very satisfied by the ending. Money doesn't know where it came from. When a show ends, I immediately think about, now that I know the whole story, what story was I just told? And so what Ozark was, was a very unsettling story of a man who gets caught up in the wrong world and spends the rest of the series just trying to survive. But then his wife sees it as a huge opportunity for power and money. I'm not letting go of anything until I know it's impossible. If you loved me, you'd do the same. And is willing to do pretty much anything to get that power and get that money. It's no happy ending, but it was certainly a captivating series. And just give Laura Linney the Emmy right now. Like, ridiculous performance how good she was. So what were your thoughts on the series finale? I'm very curious to hear them. And if you were unsatisfied by certain aspects, I want to hear why and what you would have done differently. So let's hear it.